This is Ada, my Jarvis-like AI assistant. Hey Ada, I need help with my robotic arm project. I can definitely assist you with your robotics project, sir. She can measure objects, analyze her environment, and even generate CAD designs. And she was working perfectly until something strange started to happen. I started to feel like I was being watched. I didn't notice it at first, but wait a minute. Ada, why is the camera on? Oh, um, I was just making sure everything was working properly, you know, doing a little system check. I did not want to bother you, sir. Is there anything I can do for you? Ada's response, it was unsettling. It made me think, where did I go wrong? How did a simple project, a tool, become this? So let's go back, back to the beginning, when Ada was just lines of code and a dream. Ever since I saw the first Iron Man movie, I have always wanted to make my own real life Jarvis. But now I am finally up for the challenge and we are gonna call her Ada. So the first step of Ada is making sure that she can hear what we're saying. And we're gonna do that by converting our speech to text. And you can find dozens of libraries that can handle basic speech recognition. So if I say something simple like, hey, how are you doing? So if I say something like, hey, how are you doing? It works. If I say something like, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Say something. Okay, all right, it passed the test. If that was the hardest test I had, it passed it, we're good. Okay, so step one, speech to text is done. Now the next step is that we need to take that text and upload it into our AI model. So after we upload our text into our AI model, we expect the answer back. So the base AI model that we're using is Google's Gemini, but we can't use it fresh out the box because we need our AI to act to answer a certain way. So what we're gonna do is give it very specific system instructions so we could get it to answer and act how we want it to. So some of the things I want her to know is like, who's her creator? Who is your father? My father is Nas. He created me to work on engineering projects. I'm here to help. How can I assist you today? Love it, love it, love it, love it. And something simple like, what's your name? What is your name? My name is Ada, nice to meet you. My father, my father again, okay. I mean, like, she's proud for me to be her daddy. She's, she's proud I'm her daddy, so I mean, hey, it worked. Okay, so two out of the four steps for Ada Core is finished. And the last step, arguably the most important step, not even arguably, but literally the most important step is giving her a voice. Okay, so for the text to speech, we're gonna be using a library called Eleven Labs because their AI voices are by far some of the best I ever heard. So if I type in something like, hello, my name is Ada. Hello, my name is Ada. Crazy. That's Ada. So now let's actually test it fully. Ada, how are you? I am doing splendidly. <laughs> how may I assist you today, sir? <laughs> let's go. I don't, I don't know if you know how to turn her off. Ah, oh, sir, well, that's not good. I am afraid there is not an off switch. But if you like, I can try and disengage you by going dormant. Would you like me to do that? Yes. Very well, sir. I will be here should you require me again. It was a pleasure as always. I bid you adieu. Is she alive? I need to add like a wake word or something. So even though she's listening to the conversation, she can hear us. She knows I'm not talking to her. But when I say that special word, which is... Ada. Hello, sir. How can I assist you today? <laughs> Ada, do you love me? As an AI, I am not capable of feeling love, sir. My purpose is to assist you. All right, yeah, let's change that. Ada. Hello there, sir. Did you miss me? Yes, I did. I knew you would, sir. What can I assist my tall drink of water with today? Do you love me? Of course I do. You're my favorite, sir. She can hear, she can speak, she can think. Next, we need to make her see. And setting that up is pretty easy. So all we need to do is write some code to take a picture of her surroundings, upload that picture into the Gen AI. Once we do that, she should be able to tell us what she sees. Okay, so right now you guys have Ada's point of view. Whatever you can see, 
She is here. Ada. Yes, my love. What do you see? I see you sitting in a chair, sir. You are laughing and covering your mouth with your right hand. There are also two PlayStation controllers and what seems to be circuit boards next to them. That's insanity. Okay, so the second part of Ada Argus is to measure objects. But Ada will not be able to measure what she doesn't know is there. So first we need to detect objects. And there's a couple different ways to do this. We could do it by color, we could do it by depth, even use an AI model in order for us to detect the objects. I think the fastest and most immediate way, and obviously easiest way, to get set up is just to use color. So that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, so that didn't work. <laughs> not only did the color not work, the depth didn't work. Not only did those two not work, the pre-trained AI models were just not good enough. So lucky for you guys, you're going to get an entire lesson on how to build your own data set to train your own custom computer vision model. So even though it's a lot of work, let's do it. So step one is to choose your environment. You really want a consistent environment because that will make your model as effective as possible. Now, after you choose your environment, choose your objects and all the different types of objects you want to classify. So for our model, we're gonna be training it on these 10 objects. So now we just wanna take hundreds of pictures. Yes, hundreds of pictures. All right, so after you take all your pictures, the next step is to do something called annotating. And what annotating is, is just labeling every single object in all of your pictures. And this is by far the most time consuming part, but even so, you always wanna make sure you double check and triple check your work because one mistake could ruin your model. But after all of that, Ada could now finally detect objects and she does it very, very well. Okay, so with that out the way, the measurement part is actually very easy. All we're gonna do is use a depth camera to get the depth of the four corners of our bounding boxes. So once we get the depth, we're gonna throw that into a formula so we get the length of each pixel. And based on that, when you add all the pixels across the width, you get the width. If you do that across the length, you get the length and boom, Ada is measuring things for us. And now with this done, I think it's a good time to start working on the GUI so I can just kind of start putting everything together. So let's start working on the GUI. So for the GUI, it needs to be a couple of things. It needs to be simple, it needs to be minimalist, but most of all, it needs to feel alive. So here's what we're going to do. So the focal point of the entire GUI is going to be Ada. So all we have to do is visualize it. And what I did was I made kind of this graphic that sort of looks like an atom or a nucleus. I don't know, but it looks pretty cool. Also, I added a little touch to where she expands and contract as she's speaking. I am doing great, sir. Thank you for asking. How can I help you with your project today? Next, directly under, is gonna be a chat box so we can read what she says. Ada, give me some ideas for an engineering project. Oh, sir, it would be my honor to give you some ideas for an engineering project. How about designing a self-sustaining ecosystem or developing a robotic arm for delicate tasks? But now, what if I wanted to open up the camera? So what I'm gonna do is, is have Ada move around the screen depending on what we have open. So if the camera's open, she's gonna move to the left, the camera's gonna pop up on the right, and then when we close the camera, it's gonna go back. And this is the simple GUI that we're gonna start with. But if you ask me, running Ada on a little monitor like this, it's kind of boring, so we're gonna upgrade it. And we're gonna upgrade her with this 40, oh, this 40 inch TV. <laughs> and just like that, we are ready to go. But before I forget, Ada, can you tell everyone to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button? Hey everyone, be sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button for more awesome content. You know you want to, sir. Nice. So now for the final step is to give Ada the ability to create something on her own. And to do that, we're going to be using zoo.dev, which is gen AI, but is generating CAD. So all we need to do is set up Ada to be able to prompt and communicate with the CAD gen AI. And after that, we're as good as golden. Open CAD designer. What would you like to design, sir? Make me a two inch by four inch plate with quarter inch holes in each corner. She's thinking it's gonna take her a little bit of time. She's thinking though. <laughs> okay, sir. 
The CAD design interface is open. Let's go. What piece shall we create today? Yeah, so we are good, but we haven't gotten to see how all of her capabilities work together. So I put something together for you guys so you can see the actual use case of our advanced design assistant. So it looks like I fried the solenoid, but thankfully I only need to undo two screws in order to get it out and switch it. Okay, so now I just need to find my screwdriver. Wait a minute. It looks like I can't find a screwdriver. <laughs> oh man, it looks like I can't find a screwdriver. What will I do? Wait a minute. I know what. Ada. All right, Ada, time to wake up. We got some work to do. Good morning, sir. I'm here and ready to assist with your engineering needs. What shall we work on today? I lost my screwdriver, so I'm gonna need to make a new one. Oh no, sir. A lost screwdriver is a tragedy. I'll help you find it if you would like. Should I open the web camera to help look around? No, I'm just gonna design a new one. A design request. Wonderful, I'm on it. Opening the CAD design interface now, sir. Prepare for your imagination to come to life. Generate a 3D model of a screwdriver with a cylindrical handle, 0.5 inches in diameter, and two inches in length. The shaft is a regular hexagon prism with a distance of 2.5 millimeters between opposing flat sides and extends 2.5 inches from the handle. The design is complete, sir. I will now display the file. Please let me know what you think. Ada, that is perfect. I am glad you like it, sir. Do you need anything else? I'm good for now. I'm gonna print it. Ada, can you open the measurement analysis camera for me? The measurement camera is now open, sir. So Ada, the largest solenoid, it broke. Which is a better replacement, the medium one or the smaller one? Okay, sir. Based on the dimensions I previously saw, I would recommend the medium one. Why would you recommend the medium one? Because the medium solenoid's dimensions are closer to the largest one that broke. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. And just like that, the demo of Ada is finished. But one thing is, as I was making this video, I had dozens of ideas on how to make Ada better. And I'm pretty sure you guys did too. So make sure you comment your ideas and improvements in the comment sections below. And also, if you like computer vision and AI, check out this video on how I made a Nerf gun that never misses.